Hello everybody, it's Hopfrog here. Happy day after Christmas. Today is December 26th, 2021. Woo! <laughs> I've been kind of absent from doing a lot of videos, my live streaming and, and different things and stuff. But I just wanted to share, um, I was out running errands today and I picked up a few things. Went to the local Goodwill and found some things that I thought Hey, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cheap, so that's the most important thing. So here we go. First up is a record by the Pat Travers Band. They were famous for having a song called Boom Boom, Out Go the Lights. This is looks like an original on Polydor. Has a little bit of love, we'll call it. <laughs> it's been played, has songs, Heat in the Street, Killer Instincts, I Tried to Believe, Hammerhead, and such and such. So it has... The original sleeve there's the guys in the back record was in pretty good shape wasn't too bad found this there city to city by Jerry Rafferty this one and the other one were a dollar fifty um, this one has his hit song Baker Street and this it's all yellowed so you know it's you know it's old this is on the United Artists uh, label here the vinyl needs a little bit of cleaning it's just dusty no scratches or anything on there it looks in really good shape so actually Baker Street I think is the only song I've ever heard I might have heard something though and I just didn't know that was him so that's pretty cool. Put that back in there if I drop it on the ground, right? This, I was really pleasantly surprised. This one was, is a single. It was $2. Frank Zappa and his daughter, Moon Unit. She was we're going by Moon here, but her name was Moon Unit. This is from his album, You Are What You Is. And this did not have... A paper sleeve with it record looks in okay shape it's on his barking pumpkins label and it's the b-side is you are what you is and the one side I bought it for was Valley Girl very popular song I think I heard that was Frank Zappa's only top 40 hit <laughs> Frank Zappa does a lot of really interesting music if you, if you haven't heard him Give it a listen. You may or may not like it. It's just, I respect him. This was pretty cool too. I was surprised I found this. This is Jethro Tull, thick as a brick. It has the original paper thing in there. Record is in good shape. It's on Reprise Records, has the little steamboat on there. So you know this is from 1972. And this is the album where it looked like a a big record, a big uh, newspaper article. And there's like a little booklet that came with it and stuff. It has all these art, um, looks like a tabloid sheet almost. So I thought that was kind of interesting. That's pretty cool. This was a buck. I like a lot of different music. Jethro Tull is pretty cool. Some people like them, some people don't. So that's pretty cool. It has like this old article and stuff on there. So Then I also found this, Blue Oyster Colt. And all these albums look like they're part of somebody's collection who showed them a bit of love. They played them a lot, so they have the normal thing. This one looks like the case might have got a little bit of moisture to it. The album's a little dusty, but it's in good shape on Columbia. This did not have the sleeve either in there, so I'll have to remedy that. Lewister Colt Agents of Fortune in it's a uh, folds out like that. The well, artwork of albums has always impressed me. 
When you look at it like that, you go, oh, that's no big deal. But then he's like, ooh, man, there's spacey stuff in there. And here they are, like, on the moon. You have the Earth in the background playing roulette. So there you go. Picked up this one for 50 cents. This, this is Joan Baez. And I actually picked up this one to use <laughs> as a sacrificial record for a video that I'm going to be doing here shortly. Sorry, Joan. No hate to Joan. But I'm sure you guys will appreciate the humor that goes into, into the video. And also, old Engelbert Humperdinck, A Man Without Love. This is on the Parrot label, a product of London. I got this for like 50 cents. I don't know if it's worth anything. If it is, let me know. If not, this is also going to be used in a video where both these records will be meeting their demise. <laughs> That's all I can say. Anyways, I picked these, uh, these CDs up pretty cheap. Simple plan. They might be giants. This is the Flood one. Has um, Birdhouse in Your Soul. A few other songs. There's about 19 hits on there. Save Ferris on CD. Live Throwing Copper. The only reason I'm going through these quick is it's probably stuff people have already seen a hundred times. The Wonder Stuff, Never Loved Elvis. A lot of CDs from the 90s. Uh, Start a War by Static X. Switchfoot, Beautiful Letdown. Ministry, Industrial Band, in case you guys haven't heard. Um, Acoustic Worship album. All these are like 50 cents. Some of them I think were a dollar, but they were, they're all in really, really good shape. And then, I like to collect books and stuff. I like to read and stuff. So, I found, let me show you. I actually found this one first. Room Full of Mirrors. It's a biography by Jimi Hendrix. I have not read this one, but I've read other ones. I was going to buy this a while back, and it was like 15 bucks. And then I seriously just, I forgot about it. I'm like, oh, you know. So... I was in there and I saw this there. I go, you know what? It's two bucks. I got to get it. Jimi Hendrix is my favorite guitar player of all time. And it's probably stuff I've already read before, just rehashed. So, but you know, for a buck, you can't, you can't complain. And then I found this. This was actually only a dollar. This is Dave Grohl. Um, nothing to lose. When this came out, it looks like this was about 14 bucks or so. And got this one for a dollar. It's like in really good shape. Has a couple color pictures in there. But you know. Just kind of talks about. When he joined Nirvana. The beginning of his band. Just kind of all that stuff. From from Nirvana. Pre-Nirvana. Nirvana. And then starting the Foo Fighters. And I know he's got a couple other books. And then this one. I actually found there. This was a dollar. This is a movie I had heard about. But never seen. It's a film by. The Coen Brothers called Burn After Reading. And it's kind of like a weird, twisted CIA spy kind of comedy kind of thing and stuff. And, you know, it looked pretty interesting. I actually was watching a video on YouTube about lighting and doing screenplay and doing storyboarding and stuff. And the use of colors and they were they use this as an example saying that whenever you see this particular color they want to emphasize this kind of feeling and emotion and they'll add music to kind of recreate that and sometimes they'll actually do weird stuff where they'll play some real happy sounding music right before something really bad happens and the scene will be the music might be happier sounding but this the actual scene itself will be kind of dreary or vice versa so it's like they're always doing stuff to kind of keep us on our toes. So I thought 
this would be entertaining to watch and kind of line up with what they were saying and kind of help me when I make my YouTube videos, my parodies that I do and some of the other things. There's a lot of ideas that I have locked away in here, but it's just, I feel really self-conscious about how I'm presenting them and I want to make sure I present them in a good way where it's just not thrown together like this video was. Anyways, thank you for watching this. And I will show you what I'm going to be doing with those albums another day. Most of them I'm keeping. The other two I showed you, they're good. You'll, you'll, you'll like it. All right. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You'll like it. All right. Have a great one, everybody. I'll see you guys real soon.